What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to jump straight into the video, how to save money on a low income. This has been an extremely popular topic on my channel and on YouTube in general, but today I'm going to take a different spin on it. So I'm going to start off this video by showing you this clip that I saw this morning on TikTok of all places. Check this out. I'm also going to have this on the screen for you. In a position now where we're making more money than we've ever made, and we are literally the brokest we've ever been. Brokest we've ever been. Brokest we've ever been. Brokest we've ever been. But I'm making the most money I ever had my entire life. My husband and I, between the two of us, gross, make like over eighty thousand dollars a year. And if you told me a few years ago that eighty thousand dollars a year was not going to be enough for a family of four, that I make more than what I made back in 2015. But I am still literally living paycheck to paycheck. I have to work 60 hours a week and make $80,000 a year to make ends meet. That's insane. I just, I can't even begin to wrap my head around it. Financially, I just, I don't understand anymore. I don't understand how I make $34 an hour and I can't function. I can't function. I can't pay my bills. There's nothing in my life that I can look forward to long term. Like, I can find things that excite me or make me happy or that I'm thankful for in my day to day life, but there's nothing in the long run that feels worth it. I shouldn't be struggling. We make enough money that I shouldn't be struggling. Where's the point? What what am I what am I working for? What have I got two jobs for? What am I going to school for? Because it feels like there's no winning this rat race and I'm still gonna be struggling no matter what I do. They are literally stripping us dry with these fucking rent, food, utility, house, car, everything the fuck is expensive. Everything is gonna at least forty fucking percent. I don't even have money to do shit! ever meant to follow capitalism to this extent so that was a video i have quite a bit to unpack about that and i write a lot about that in my book the wealth journey you can find it up here it actually teaches quite a bit <clears throat> just about mindset when it comes to money how to budget your money, what to do with your money once you got to where you want to be, the whole journey of wealth. And it also gives you a snapshot into my journey and it talks about struggles with work and things that everybody goes through but don't really talk about and you get to see it from a relatable place. So if you're interested in that, check that out. I will link it up here as well as in the description. But we're also going to get to the actual topic of this video of how to actually save with low income because it's extremely difficult to do but one thing i wanted to point out and the reason that i actually showed you this video is simply because of this it's not that you're necessarily making low income you could be in fact making more money than you were making last year or the year before that you could be making significantly more than you were making five years ago and still feel like you're just making ends meet still living paycheck to paycheck and still about broke now i think that video i just showed you was going a little deeper and talking about capitalism that ain't what this channel is about this channel is about helping you improve your personal finances and achieve your financial goals so i do agree with what a lot of people are saying in this video a lot of things shouldn't be the way they are you should not be struggling financially when you're making X amount of money I 100% agree with that but the one thing about life and one thing about personal finances in general is complaining about your situation is not going to improve your situation I think you should 100% be self-aware like the people in this video but once all of that's out of the way it's time to buckle down and get to work and find a plan for you so the first thing and the first tactic I would suggest using if you're wanting to save money on a low income and I'm talking a lot of money we're not just trying to put away $10 a month you got to start somewhere but that's not the ultimate goal for you 
watching this video. Your ultimate goal is probably to save five figures, if not more, in a savings account so you can actually feel like you can breathe and like you're above water. So I'm gonna help you do that. The first thing is changing the way that you look at money. We have to get out of the mindset that a dollar today is worth just as much as a dollar tomorrow. That is not true. What is true though is a dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow. That's why inflation exists. That's why you could buy a house for much less than you could buy the same exact house today because money just goes up and up and up every single year. That's why gas prices go up. People know this in the back of their heads. They even openly complain about the housing market going up and the gas prices going up. But us as a people, we fail to realize, and I've been guilty of this as well, especially when I first started off in my career, we fail to realize that even though, uh, let's say the national average salary in America is $59,000 a year. Sure, that's a $9,000 improvement over what it was a couple years ago or even five years ago. But in terms of inflation, that is horrible. So we have to get out of the mindset of saying things like, I thought $80,000 would be enough to hold down a household of four. The world today isn't what it was five, six, seven years ago. It's just not. Is it fair? Is it okay? Should it be like this? No, but the thing is we have to take control of our money. We have to take control of our financial situation. So knowing what we know now, we know that inflation is eating our money alive. And we know that when you get a raise at work or even a promotion at work, a lot of times that might just cover the inflation. But a lot of times raises don't even cover that. It might be half or even a smaller percentage of inflation, which means even if you are making more money today than you were a few years ago, you could still be moving backwards in terms of what you're actually earning because the bills, the prices of everyday things are going up at such a rate that even though your money's going up, it's not going up as fast as the prices of the things that you buy. It's a sad reality, but I would just say change how you think about money right now. It's no longer, I make $34 an hour, I make $40 an hour. It's you have to change the way that you're thinking about it because for years you've heard people say things like that and you're like, oh, they're making good money. And frankly, that is good money. And you should be proud if you are making that kind of money. But that doesn't mean that you're out of the woods. That doesn't mean that you're safe, so to speak, because you still have financial obligations. And if you're not careful, your financial obligations will easily cost more than what you earn in a year. And just real quick, if you want free financial advice, go ahead and subscribe to my newsletter. It is down in the description. All you gotta do is click on the link and then you type your email in and then you'll be getting automatic emails from me every single week. So check that out as well. Another thing that we need to start thinking about that's differently, this is kind of step number two. We need to think in terms of not what we make per year on paper, not our gross income. We need to start thinking about what we make after taxes. And if you're paying for rent or mortgage right now, Multiply that number that you pay a month by 12 and then subtract it from how much you make per year after taxes and just look at how much money is left. And as a matter of fact, we're going to do this together. I'm literally going to make numbers up as I go. I have my phone right here. So you're going to see on the screen the math that I'm doing. So right now you see my calculator. Let's say, for example, after taxes, you made $64,700 per year. I just typed it on the uh, calculator so you could see it. But let's say your rent is, we'll say 1600 a month. Rent is getting ridiculous. So 1600 times 12, cool, $19,200. So 64,700 dollars minus 1900 to 19, I, I forgot for a second. That's $45,500 left, right? So on paper, you still have a considerable amount left. So in your case, write down however the math works for you. But check this out. <clears throat> 19,200 divided by $64,700. That's 29.6%. So I'm gonna ask you this question. When it comes to your rent slash mortgage, once you've done this math that I've just done on this calculator, I need to turn this screen off now. Once you've done this math, is your rent 30% or less, or does it go above 30%? Because if we're following 
part of step two. This is all part of step two, by the way, but if we're following part of step two, we're just following a very simple yet effective budget plan. And the one that I recommend for you is the 50, 30, 20 rule. But since we're about improving our savings and we're trying to get as much saved as possible, no matter what your income is, I would flip the 30 and the 20. So simply put 50% of this budget is necessities. 30% is usually wants. 20% is savings, but we're going to make savings 30%. And we're going to make wants 20%. That's how that's going to go for this video. But the point behind this is, yeah, groceries are expensive. Yeah, gas prices are expensive. Car maintenance, all these things can get up there, right? But I don't think those alone are holding you back financially. Now, I could be wrong, but a lot of times your biggest bill next to taxes is going to be your rent slash mortgage. So you want to ask yourself, is my or is my rent alone? Like just to have a roof over my head, is that 30% or more? Because it could be that therein lives a problem for you, especially if you're looking at 40 or even 50%. That accounts for the whole 50% within the 50, 30, 20 rule. So in that case, you might want to consider making certain adjustments. But anyway, outside of all that stuff, I don't know how much a month you pay on groceries, but groceries have been getting crazy. So you have groceries, you might have a car note on top of that, gas, probably got insurance that you're paying for. And after a while, you can see how easy it is for this 50% of necessities to get eaten up. So you gotta be honest with yourself and see how much wiggle room you make. So the first step, is seeing how much money you make after taxes and changing the way that you look at money. The second step is using a simple yet very effective budgeting method such as the 50-30-20 rule, in this case 50-20-30 rule. 20% is wants, 30% is savings. But the biggest thing that I think you should have a microscope on is this. Just simply do the math. So again, I'm gonna have my calculator so you can see everything that I'm talking about in real time so it makes that much more sense. So we're gonna go again with the $64,700. This is after taxes. So this is a really good wage. This is probably something like, I don't know, maybe 85,000, maybe 86 or $87,000 per year gross. And then this is after taxes. So we don't need to we don't need to fool ourselves by saying I make 85 grand a year. Like you're doing good, don't get me wrong, but you need to be real with yourself on how much you're actually making. This number on the screen is how much this fictional person is making, right? What's 50% of six? it's 32,350 dollars. So that is your budget per year for necessity. So you wanted to buy this by 12 to see what you should be spending per month. You know, if you go over this, it's gonna be very hard to control your personal finances beyond it. This is kind of like the first step of personal finances for you. So you have $2,695.83. So if your rent is 1,600 of that, you have that much left per month. That's not that much to work with, especially if you have a family, or even if you're by yourself, like me personally, I eat a lot. I work out a lot. I do a lot of cardio. I do Muay Thai. I lift weights. I run. So my appetite is through the roof all the time, like a high school kid. You know what I'm saying? And so for me, I might spend seven, eight, nine hundred dollars on groceries per month. And that's being responsible. That's not even splurging out. That's just getting the necessities and getting the proteins and, you know, the stuff that I like to eat and I cook at home. But still, that type of thing can mess even me up. So these are the things we got to look at. Not to lecture you about my own personal business, but I'm just letting you know that's what's going on. So let's say for you, you have a family of four like the lady in the video. I think they're probably going to be spending more at groceries on groceries. And I can't really guess off the top of my head what the national average would be. So we'll just go to Google real quick. I just typed in average family grocery bill. It says it ranges between $922 and $1488 a month. So on the low end, let's say you do have a family. 
minus 922. Now you have 173 left. You still got gas. You still got insurance. Now you might pay less than that. You might be $700, but you get the idea. You have to start realizing how much you even have in general to spend. All right, so anyway, moving on to wants. What is 20% of $64,700? That is $12,940 divided by 12 to get the monthly budget. That's $1,078.33. So that's actually quite a bit. But if you ran over your 50% in necessities like most of us do, you might only have 10% because you might be spending 60% on your necessities, which means you only have 10% available for your wants because your savings is still gonna be 30% because that's one thing we're not gonna shake on in this video. We're gonna keep our savings to that 30%. So let's say this is cut in half, boom. You have $539.16, that's still quite a bit, but now you have to start thinking, okay? I like date night, I like going out, you know, I like to eat or if you like to go to, to drink or if you like to go to cigar lounges or if you like to just, you know, go to clubs every now and then or you like to go to the casino, you like to shoot guns, you have, let's say you have some sort of hobby, something that you really enjoy doing or something in your leisure time that you really enjoy doing, you have $539.16. You could blow through that super quickly if you're not careful. If you're like me and you really like to eat and I like steak, it might be a hundred dollars each time you go out to eat. So you'll need to look at how many times can I go out to eat this month and still have a decent balance between my necessities and my wants. So I don't go insane because you can go pretty crazy just sticking to the book and just saving and penny pitching and and penny pinching. And it's, it's too much grinding. It's too much work 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 it's not enough read it it's not enough of work here okay i get a little break here so i think people kind of need that and if you're in an extreme situation by all means go completely in on this but for most of my guys and girls watching this video you really want to take a step back and, and understand yourself you you want to have a balance nine times out of ten so this brings us to savings. 30% of $64,700 is 19,410. We're gonna divide this by 12. $1,617.50 per month is how much this fictional person in this video would be putting away in their savings per month. Now, a lot of people don't feel comfortable putting that much in their savings at once and, and frankly the way that people get paid it's never really even like your paychecks are even granted if especially if you work like a traditional job but what i'm saying is your bills are not even because your heaviest bills rent or mortgage is lined up it's usually going to be like at the beginning of the month so if your heaviest bills are at the beginning of the month that means you now have less money to spare at the beginning of the month so that's why you really need to look at this closely. I did make a video specifically about how to master your budget, how to master your personal finances. I will link that. I really, really urge you to watch that video. It's gonna help you out a lot. I also made a video how to double your savings account and that's gonna actually be the next topic that I talk about because saving can be quick. But if you, if you look at that number on the screen, you could get intimidated. I don't have 16, 17, 50 a month, but According to my calculations, as long as you spend within each budget that you give yourself, within the amount you make after taxes per month, you're well within range. It's just going to feel like a crunch because you might not be used to looking at your money that closely. And it's very uncomfortable, even for people who are experienced with doing this, even for people who've been doing this for a long time. But anyway, you might feel like you don't have that much but it might just be that you need to level out how your budget is. So you might have 
for the first 15 days of the month to put into your savings. And then the next 15 days, you might come up with the rest of the 1300 or however much is left to give yourself. And the best way to do this so you don't have to think about it is to automate your bank account. Again, I have a whole video showing you how to automate your bank account. This video would go way too long if I discussed all that stuff. It's actually really simple to do. It's just that a lot of people don't even know you can do that. And for those that know you can do that, they might not know how. So it's just one of those things that I show you how to do once, you know how to do it forever. So I think that's a good investment on your time to watch that video whenever you get the chance to do so. Even if you're not where you want to be, you're going to have to make some sacrifices, which is going to make you feel even worse because you're not where you want to be and you're sacrificing on top of that. But you got to think about this. You're going to sacrifice something either way. If you stay in the position that you're in and you constantly complain about the position you're in without coming forward and doing the work to resolve your situation one day at a time, one year at a time, it's going to take some time to do. But if you don't do that, you're sacrificing your future results for right now. But if you sacrifice a little bit on your wants now, you could have the future that you've always wanted. And it sounds cliche. It doesn't sound like the sexy thing to do, but a lot of times that's the right thing to do. That's the right direction for you to go into. And what separates the wealthy from pretty much everyone else is their priorities. So you watching this video, I'm showing you step by step how to prioritize your finances and what it takes. It's not the most fun thing in the world. It can be boring at times. It can feel like you don't have that much of a life because now you're cutting back on some of the things that you really like to do, especially if your necessities goes over that 50%. But the beautiful thing about this is once you get your finances together and you become financially stable, I have a video about that as well. But once you become financially stable, your worries are no more. You're not worried about all of that because you have a nice savings account. Now you can worry about things like investing or building a college fund for your kids or buying a house or whatever it is that your goal is. So I have several videos on those topics, but the whole point of this video is to understand it's not so much that you're making less money or that you're on a low income. We have many people people who make high incomes, people who make lower incomes. But if you overspend on your regular everyday bills just because you make more than you made last year, you're making the type of mistake that breeds a consistent pattern of what is currently going on in your life. I know what that's like. I've even done it. But the most important thing is to take a step back, learn from the mistakes that you've made. The best things you can do now is keep your expenses the same as your money goes up and be mindful that inflation just might overtake the amount that your money just went up. That's why it's important to keep your, your expenses the same and not be so quick to upgrade. It really assess the situation before you decide to upgrade. That will be my general overall advice for you. That is lifestyle creep. And that is when we take the inflation that we already have and we multiply it by our wants. I have a whole separate video on that and you should check that out too when you get a chance. But that's the overall thing that I want you to take home from this video. Change the way you think about money. Look at your money after taxes. Look at how much you would give yourself to budget for in each category, the 50, 20, 30, you make a plan and you nail it and you review it every month if you have to. The first month might not be perfect, but the idea is that you get started and you get going. And then after a little bit of work, after a little bit of grinding, you'll see some results. They might not be substantial results, but you'll see results. That's going to give you the confidence to keep going. And in the background, I recommend increasing your skills and just focusing on something that you're good at, whether it's your job currently and you're wanting a promotion, 
something, something outside of work. Like for me, I focus on YouTube. I focused on my investing course, which this video is not about that. So I won't go too much into it, but you want to focus on things that can bring in more income for you and that can kind of help counteract that little percentage of inflation that your raise that you got last year didn't account for. So anyway, that is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.